Before you go, Exile, question for you, if I may ask it. You have touched the Force. What does it feel like? Please, I wish to know. It is like a cloud, a mist that drifts from living creature to creature, set in motion by currents and eddies. It is the eye of the storm, the passions of all living things turned into energy, into a chorus. It is the rising swell at the end of life, the promise of new territories and new blood, the call of new mysteries in the dark. I see. Thank you both. I appreciate you sharing your knowledge with me. Cool. And I think that covers that. And I was correct. She did have a lot more to say. Cool. All right. Let's get into the main episode, folks. See you in a second. Hello there, kids. It's I, Stray Cat, the one and only, coming with another episode of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 The Sith Lords. Alrighty, when we left off, we had just gotten back onto the Ebon Hawk after finally getting it from Atris and the Handmaidens, and uh, now we're given free reign to just run around. And I'm just going to keep looking at stuff. Yep, still can't get that to be anything more than... <sighs> Anything more than just one, two, or four. Oh, well. Is what it is. Um, strengthening. I can't do higher than two. Okay. Well, is what it is. Uh, let me look at the upgrades we can do. That's basically it I got so far. This is fine. Oh, I completely forgot I had <laughs> upgrades I can give to this, at least. Cool. Um, hmm. Accuracy scope, sure. Mandalorian blaster, sure. Um, blaster rifle, I don't even know who I gave that to. But we'll just ignore that for now. Okay. Cool. And we had gotten a couple new companions since we got onto Telos. We have Baudur and the Handmaiden. Question is, should we talk to them right now? Or should we just head over to the newest place? Oh, yeah, that's right. We had a part for the ATK unit. Uh, initialize the control cluster. You have installed the droid's control cluster. Alrighty. How many uh, parts still need to be repaired? It doesn't tell me. Okay. Alrighty. Well... Technically... Sorry, my voice was starting to give out, which is a common issue I've had recently. Uh, yeah, recently we had learned uh, a few things about Atten and Kreia as well. Or at least mainly Atten. So uh, let's investigate that, shall we? I don't know what it is, but you look different. It's hard to explain, but it's, uh, it's good to see. I look different? What do you mean? It's like you've got this glow, but only when I see you out of the corner of my eye. Interesting. I feel as if I'm more in touch with the Force than I ever have been. It shows. It's kind of inspiring, to be honest. Anyway, just wanted to mention it. I think the others have noticed it too. Good. Okay, I have some questions. Alright, what did you want to know? 
Care to explain where you got your Chani training? Huh? What are you talking about? When we entered the Telos Academy, you dropped into an Ichani battle stance. Oh, that. Don't tell anyone, but you wouldn't believe how many fights you can prevent by just pretending to know that stuff. I mean, it doesn't compare to wearing a lightsaber, but then again, that doesn't seem to help you much. Don't change the subject. Yeah, so what? I don't ask any dumb questions about your past, despite the fact that it keeps throwing us into life-threatening situations. Wanna know why? I figure if you ever want to tell me something, you will. So give me the same respect, all right? I'm not accusing you. I just want to know if you've got any other useful skills. You could be a real asset with combat training. Well, hey, thanks. But you've got the wrong guy. I'm good at shooting people, cracking wise, and pretending to know how to fight with my hands. All right. Fair enough. I had some other questions. All right. What did you want to know? Can you teach me how to play Bazak? All right, but I'm out of credits, so it's Republic Senate rules. Okay, Republic Senate rules? That's where we waste a lot of time trading cards and trying to beat each other. But in the end, nobody wins. Everybody loses, and nobody accomplishes anything. It's like stalemate, ah. except the goal is to pass time until the audience gets bored and leaves. I'd rather not have my audience leave. <laughs> Just be honest here. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's play. I gained and then lost influence with that? That's weird. That's extremely weird. Okay, whatever. Let's go. Just to keep my skills up, I guess. For lack of a better phrase. Uh... And turn for now. And for now. Perfect. Ah. Well, probably going to lose this one either way. Not willing to use it that many cards this early on. Oh, boy. Uh, I'd be playing with fire if I go any further, so I'll just go with this. Damn. Alright. Standing with that. Oh, balls. Okay, well, <laughs> maybe I should have played with that. Uh, whoa, okay, that was weird. Maybe I should have played with the three earlier. I probably wouldn't have lost as quickly. Okay, where is... Oh, T3, there you are. Um, You look like you've suffered a lot of damage over the years. How much damage? Huh. So you lost a lot of programs in your behavior core, in addition to the damage to your frame? Hmm. Well, I'm sure you'll gain that skill back. I'm glad to have you along. I can use my computer skill. I'm pretty high on my computer skill. It's probably a good idea. I might be able to upgrade your memory core. Alright. Let me take a look. Okay. All done. How do you feel? Gained plus one intelligence. Cool. What do you mean I faded out there for a second? You were shut down. Okay. Other questions? I'm pretty sure I can do more upgrades at this point. Mind if I try to upgrade your memory core again? Cool. Alright, let me take a look. Fidit. Okay. That should up your processor speed. additional plus one intelligence. Hmm. 
relaxing working on you. Maybe I just got caught up in it. And we'll see if we can go with one more. Oh, no, that's everything. Oh, that's right. I can use him as a workbench to upgrade things. I completely forgot that's an option. Wowzers. Okay. Cool. Even more influence gained. I'm annoyed that I lost influence with Atten, though. I gained it and then lost it. really annoying. But it is what it is, I guess. Uh, hmm. Why am I over here? <laughs> There's no one over here. Uh, Baudor. That's who I wanted to talk to. Hey, General. Are you alright? You lost me. You look like you've been standing too close to one of my shield generators. I was inspired by her arm. Well, I mean... Uh, you're one to talk. Whoa. Claws out today, aren't they? <laughs> general, need something? Really, you don't have to call me General. Sorry. Yes, I can't get my head out of the past. Fair enough. I was just wondering what you've been doing since the war ended. I moved around for a couple years. Working as a starship mechanic got me from place to place. I wasn't ready to settle down after the war. Fair enough. During my exile, I did the same thing. Then you understand my restlessness. Though the war had ended, I couldn't find peace in anything. As long as I kept moving, I didn't have to think about what happened. You know what I mean? Oh. We must face our fears to become stronger. Mostly, I was angry. Angry about what I had done. About why I had done it. I decided I'd do something constructive. I wanted to make up for the things I'd done in the war. I wanted to design planetary shields. But there weren't many systems with the credits to spare. There was more that needed to be rebuilt than protected. I found out that Telos was going to be the flagship project for the Republic. And it sounded like something good. I saw Telos before the Sith raised it deserved a better fate. But Zerka ruined everything. I thought I could force Zerka out on my own, but I guess I can't fix everything myself. It's good to have you around again. It's good to be working with you again, General. Something else I can help you with? Where did you pick up the remote, anyway? That old thing? I built him when I was a kid been following me around for years now, despite what I've done to try and chase him off. Hey, just kidding. I'm happy to have you around. What does it do other than follow you around? He helps me out with repairs. I outfitted him with a cutting laser and some other tools for delicate modifications. He's also good for singeing the pants of annoying techs. I've been thinking about doing some other work on him, but I barely have time. Too busy fixing up the ship. Something else I can help you with? I mean, you don't have to focus on fixing up the ship all the time. You can eventually spend some time on that. Is that a question I should ask? Mm. Just because I'm curious what might have happened. How do you lose the arm, anyway? I got tired of it. Kept dropping my hydro spanner. Figured I'd get a new one. Ah, deflecting with humor. Fair enough. I can understand that. Yeah, I'll bet that was fun. I was only kidding. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was a souvenir from Malakor. I was lucky it was all I lost. But at least it gave me something to do, right? Everyone always said I was probably half machine anyway. Something else I can help you with? Deflection with humor. And even more humor about the fact that he lost it. I can understand that. I was curious, but since it was a loss at Malachor, it's just another thing that would be a reminder of what happened and push him to doing something that actually is constructive. Understandable, I can get that. 
I can absolutely get that. So what's your opinion on about the Tila situation? If the Republic would just rein Zerka in, there'd be no problem. But as long as Zerka is allowed to undermine the Athorian's efforts, Telos will remain dead. I can't take seeing my work being used by those blood suckers. But there's nothing I can do about it, so let's talk about something else. Something else I can help you with. Okay, I guess we're moving on. What are you doing? Just working on the ship. I'm not sure who got her up and running, but I'm amazed she's even space worthy. Whoever made these repairs doesn't think like most mechanics. But don't worry, I'll get everything in shape. Cool. Sounds good. Alright, well, there's that done. Already talked to T3 and to Atten. Maybe before I talk to the Handmaiden, I should talk to Kraya. How many more do we intend to gather to us? This ship is not the galaxy. There is only so much room. It is not my fault if they follow me. Is it? Perhaps you are wrong. They will follow you because you are a leader. Their kind always needs such, even when the figure deserves no such obedience. What makes you think they obey me? Because I am not blind, that is why. I see what they see, hear their voices when they speak to you, and notice the change when they speak to others. Why are you angry? I know many things, and I know what I am not. I am no leader. I speak with a voice that will never move others. I speak with a passion that goes unheard. They obey you because you are a leader, and perhaps something more. Have you noticed what has been happening? Have you felt it in them? I've noticed their behavior is changing. Atten especially. The fool dances in your shadow for your favor. The woman, she worships you. The alien obeys you. Even within the machines, there are echoes. Watch them carefully. See their patterns and recognize the strength in it. Influence can be a weapon, one that you may need before your journey is done. You have a point. I will reflect upon this. And what about you? I? I am but a mirror whose only purpose is to show you what your own eyes cannot yet see. I will think upon how my allies may be used then. Good, and then act upon it. It is a powerful tool to motivate others. That was Revan's way, I believe. It was a strength. What do you mean? Have you never asked yourself how Revan took the Republic and Jedi beneath him, how he made them his? Hmm. He was a powerful presence. There was little one did not believe when he spoke it with conviction. Ah, but to make officers turn on their own people to bomb innocent worlds to make pacts. Strong influence, indeed. And where did these Sith teachings come from? And why did Revan embrace them so strongly? So many questions, yet the answers are few. Hmm. I thought teachings of the Sith came from Korriban. It, it would be nice if the buttons that I press actually work. I already hit it twice. <laughs> it still didn't go through. Oh, did they? No. Revan met no Sith Empire, yet he learned their teachings. Many have mistaken the soldiers beneath Revan, the machines that were constructed to be the Sith. They are wrong. The Sith is a belief, and what Revan formed was not an empire, but something else. Yet how he did it is curious. And I suspect the answer to that question is tied to another. How was Revan able to corrupt so many so quickly? Do you have any idea? Not a one. But we shall see where our journey takes us, I think. And see how many answers we come across, yes? Fair enough. I had other questions. Ask, and I will answer. You don't seem to like the handmaiden. Why? There are countless reasons, and I have neither the time nor the patience to list them all. Uh, 
Okay, whoa. Well, that is dark side answer. That's uh, kind of bad. She has offered to help us, so show her the same respect I show you. Do you think to turn her from Atrus's will? If so, I hope your arrogance will prove true in time. But I will abide her presence. She may have her uses. Why do you say that? Because Atrus is a threat. And as much as she would try to use us against you, so may we use her servants against her. Do not see every enemy as an enemy. See them instead as an ally, whether they realize it or not. This situation may yet work to our advantage. Hmm. I will keep that in mind and watch the handmaiden carefully. Good. That is the most to be done until events unfold, as I'm sure they will in time. Fair enough. Other questions? Ask, and I will answer. Hmm. I, <clears throat> I guess that's as good a question to ask as any, if anything. Hmm. Did you know, Revan? I misspoke before, and I do not wish to choose my words unwisely again. Leave this be. Fair enough. Ask. What's wrong with your eyes? There is nothing wrong with my sight, if that is your question. I see all that I need, though the seeing of things flesh and blood has failed me some time ago. Mm. They were distractions only. There might be a way to heal your sight. There is nothing wrong with my eyes. They simply have atrophied from use. Mm -mm. They are adequate to distinguish shapes, silhouettes. If need be, I could heal them, restore my sight, but sight can prove a distraction. When one relies on sight to perceive the world, it is like trying to stare at the galaxy through a crack in the door. But that is a lesson for another time. Fair. Let's learn to see crude matter for what it is before the veil is lifted. All right. Other questions, I guess. Ask, and I will answer. She won't answer about knowing Revan, so... Did you know Atris at all? Atris herself is not as familiar to me as perhaps she should be. Yet I feel I know her, yes. What do you mean? Because Atris's path is one I walked long ago, and it is a chapter of my life that has been read and closed. She has taken the first steps, I think. We shall see. Surely you felt the righteous anger, the spoken judgments, the lack of forgiveness. You walked her path? With the righteous anger, the spoken judgments, and the lack of forgiveness? I was a historian once, gathering the relics of the Jedi, learning the ancient mysteries. Mm. Always there were more questions. One quickly learns that the Jedi Code does not give all the answers. If you are to truly understand, then you will need the contrast, not adherence to a single idea. That is why Atris and the others blamed me, sentenced me. They believed me responsible for Revan's fall. Kreia, were you to blame? You have already asked much. I do not wish to speak of this any longer. Fair enough. I'll leave you be then. I'll be going. Whoa! Oops. <laughs> Oopsie doodles. Got a net dark side shift. Hopefully it's not too massive. But, uh, good. I got a lot of influence with Kreia. That's the important part. I guess. Um, <laughs> let's see how bad it is. Okay. Oh, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Not that bad, lol. Fine. It's fine. Okay. Well, since that's done now, I've already talked about Odor. Let's now talk to the Handman. Net dark side shift. I was a little confused when <laughs> there was a bit of a lag spike when I got out of conversation with Kreia. 
but now it makes sense. It had to calculate all of the shenanigans I did <laughs> while talking with her. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. End me. Oh, welcome, exile. Is Ooh. there something you need? Are you all right? Yes. Your features, your stance. There is a calm about you that I did not notice on Telos. Because I'm light side. What do you mean? There is an energy about you, a lightness in your movements. It is something I have seen in only the most disciplined and revered of the Ichani Weapon Masters. Yet it comes to you with ease. I do feel better. I feel more in touch with my surroundings and others. It shows in your features. It is beautiful to see. Beautiful. Well, thank you. <laughs> Can I ask you some questions? You may ask. Cool. Did Atris ever mention me? She said you betrayed the Jedi by going to war when it was forbidden to you. You turned on your masters, your teachings, and yourself. Oh, so this 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 is a part that I wanted to talk about. Rather, I've already talked to her about. I think that going to war was necessary. That is not all she says. She says you know nothing of loyalty to any cause except your own animal instincts. And she told us why you fell to the dark side. I do not walk the path of the dark side. Atris says that you fell to the dark side. Ooh, you've already commented that I don't. <laughs> when you gave in to your lust for battle. Once you tasted war, you could not give it up. If that were the case, I would have fought in the Jedi Civil War. Atris says when the Dark Lord Revan returned to the Republic, you did not march with them, because you had fallen so far you could no longer feel the Force. I did not march with Revan because it was my choice. So it was a matter of choice then. If Atris has erred in her evaluation of your motivations, it might be best to inform her. You may ask. I'm pretty sure I had already went through all of this conversation before, and then I also did the redo with Kreia uh, about the Force. So, I guess I wanted to talk to you about Atris. She speaks of you often in anger, but her movements, the motion of her hand, her eyes, do not share the anger of her words. They are hmm. only the signs of loss. It has been almost the count of ten years, yet the thought of you burns within her still. Well, we didn't part on the best of terms. I believe that your leaving the Jedi Order may have hurt her more than she will ever admit. It is a difficult thing to speak of, to see Atris unable to confront such strong emotion within herself. You... you did not care for her, did you? Atris is beautiful and wise. <clears throat> There's a lot of options here that are open to my interpretation. Interesting. If she had told me what she felt, perhaps the future would have been different. I have heard that Jedi sometimes renounce the code by loving another and fall from the Order, and there are others who keep such unions secret. <laughs> the term is pulling a bindo. A lovely, lovely callback to the first. <laughs> Pulling a bindo. Ah, Jolie. Ah, you lovely old bastard. Okay. And this is the Anakin Skywalker side of the argument. You're basically encouraged to love, but not attached to love. Yes. Part of the failing of the Jedi is denial of love. It is not something that can be denied without losing part of yourself or your connection to those you are sworn to protect. I see. So, there are such unions? <laughs> I can't resist. I can't resist. The joke is so good. I think the term is pulling a bindo. Pulling a bindo? Bad joke. Bald guy. Long story. Very well. Are there 
there such a lot? <laughs> Sometimes, yes, it happens. That is what I have heard. I was not sure if it was something you had seen or experienced. No, not personally. I see. I have asked you many questions. I did not mean to. There are questions that have gathered over years, and I did not wish to ask Atris. If you have any others, you are always welcome to ask. Thank you, then. I hope this creates some measure of trust between us. It does, and I thank you. I wanted to ask you something else. You may ask. Well, I mean, we are kind of private now in the cargo hold, but nonetheless private. Why do you look different than your sisters? I honor the face of my mother. So you have a different mother but the same father? Yes, that is correct. I feel that I may trust you with such things, Ooh. so I shall speak of it Yay! if you wish to hear it. Yay! <laughs> yes, I would hear it. Though my father's blood I share with my sisters, I wear the face of my mother. My father was Usanis, an Ichani general. Mm -hmm. Usanis was a hero of the Mandalorian Wars, one of the greatest. He left our family to serve in the Mandalorian Wars, but his choice was not because of battle. Oh. He went to join my mother, one whose movements and spirit matched his. His only desire was that they fight together, side by side, for as long as there were enemies amassed against them. Interesting. If your face is any indication, she must have been beautiful. I never saw her face, and she did not return from the final battle of the war. She died in the battle that shattered Malachor V, and her body was never recovered. My father oh. returned from the Mandalorian Wars, and did not enter battle again. He entered politics, a caste where one's battles are fought through words rather than action. And if only they did better on that, and actually followed the words they actually fucking said. Hmm, that's a story for another time. Hmm, what happened to him? He was slain by Revan in the Jedi Civil War. When Revan sought to destabilize the Ichani worlds, Revan succeeded. Hmm. The fact that our father chose battle is not shameful, but that is not the reason he went to war. He went to war to be with the one he loved, but not the one he had pledged himself to. He was disloyal. Uh... I am the mark of that disloyalty. Hmm. It is said that such things run in the blood. And I have fought long to prove that this is not so. That is why I am different from my sisters. Yet I am pledged to them, and Atris, and I would die before betraying them. I tell you this in trust, and ask that you not speak of it to others. I only wish you to know. Why tell me? Because when my father returned from the Mandalorian Wars, he walked as you do now. There was something wounded inside him. He did not speak of what had happened there, and with us he was silent changed. When I look upon you, I see in you an answer to a question I have searched for all my life, and that is why I tell you this now. I do not believe you to be the monster Atris made you out to be. I believe your choice was my father's choice, and it was just as difficult. I appreciate your trust. Thank you for telling me. You have earned my trust. I wish to honor the trust you have shown me, and I wish to explain what you meant to me. I know it is difficult for others to see why I am here, but it was important that you know one of the reasons, and know that it is not simply duty that I am here, but because I want to be here. I want to fight with you side by side for as long as there are enemies that threaten you. You are a leader. Your stance, your every action proves it. <laughs> That's a dark sidey answer. I will accept your pledge. Let us stand together, then. You honor me, Exile. Together, then. Cool. I had other questions, though. You may ask. Do you have a name? Before entering Atris's service, yes, I carry the name. As all the children of the Ichani do. What was it? It is not important. My title and rank is of consequence, not my name. I take value in Atris's service, not in myself. You should take value in yourself as well. We all have value in our oaths to others and the promises we make. When we make that pledge, we are pledging ourselves to something greater. 
When importance is placed on the self, then by such acts the galaxy is unmade. There is some truth in what you say. Is that your judgment of me? If reasons of the self is why you turned away, then yes, perhaps there was a judgment there. But it was not intended as an attack. Do you think that I lost myself when I disobeyed the Jedi? I do not know. That is a question you must ask yourself. I had some other questions. You may ask. Okay. Why are you called the Handmaidens? We attend Atris. It is the duty of all of us, from the first of my sisters to me, the last of the Handmaidens. You are the last of them? I am the last of the Handmaidens. This is correct. I train so that one day that will no longer be true. Your skill is impressive, as is your devotion to your training. That is not entirely correct. There are times I am distracted. Oh. Perhaps, once having known the ways of the Jedi, you may understand what occupies my thoughts. I'm not sure I understand. There is much knowledge on Telos, and only one of the Jedi remain. There is so much about their ways of battle, their forms, their stances, that may be lost forever if the last of the Jedi is taken from the galaxy. Hmm. That's a little dark sidey. That's not as dark sidey. That's not really that dark sidey. Uh, these are light sidey. Is this what occupies your thoughts? To the Ichani, battle is a means of communication. It is an art in the truest sense of the word. Stance, form, discipline are a means of expression and communication. They speak one's heart and one's devotion to their cause. Devotion to their cause? Yes. The methods you use to meet your opponents speak truer than any words can express. When you risk pain or death, there is no truer sacrifice or strength. I agree. It shows how far you are willing to go for your goals. It was to the Jedi Trader Malak. It was to the Jedi Trader Revan. When Terrus was destroyed, it showed Malak's heart through its execution and intent. True. It was brutal, without finesse, but showed his commitment to defeat the Jedi. Yet with Revan, there was the same commitment, but it was a subtle thing. Like weaving threads in a tapestry or strokes upon a canvas. Yeah, it was he more spoke artistic. through battle and tactics <laughs> in a way one could never do in words. He showed his heart at Malachor V. And finally at the end of the Jedi Civil War. I believe he was speaking to Malak in that final battle, though few knew it. These are a lot of, a lot of options. I can tell her just to not even bother trying to translate their hate and violence. I could ask her what she thinks he was saying and I can just basically dismiss it pretty much all in different ways driven by the dark side force drove Revan to do what needed to be done uh, Malak was slain Revan turned on Malak once a friend and killed him yeah okay what do you think Revan was saying through battle, Revan was meeting betrayal with betrayal, and showing Malak the pain he had inflicted on his master. What stronger display than death for conveying one's sense of being betrayed by one's own student? Revan's anger must have been great indeed. I would have wished to have been there for that final exchange, and seen the truth of their conflict with each other. I don't want to say that because it wasn't exactly true. Forget it. I had other questions. You may ask. Um, can you teach me some fighting moves? Training is something reserved for certain cast members of the Achani. But I do not see the harm in instructing you in some basic principles. I do not understand how you and Atris fight. 
but I will instruct you on how Ichani children are raised on warfare. That seems as good as a place to start as any. All Ichani fighting principles rely on foundations. Mm -hmm. If one does not understand the most basic of fighting moves, it is not possible to understand the higher tiers. That's fair. It is similar to learning the alphabet of a language before being able to use words, then sentences. Yeah. I understand. I am ready. As a foundation, I will instruct you in our elementary movements. The body itself is the first weapon you must master. It is not okay. something that can be described. Let us duel, you and I, and that shall teach you more than my words can. Use only your hands and feet to strike at me, nothing else, or our combat shall be over. Do not resort to using any items or any force techniques you may possess. Such things will obstruct learning. All right, no force powers and weapons or items. Got it. Very well. I shall match my movements to resist your efforts. And do not hold back, or I will hurt you. Okay. Okay, she's in her underwear. All right. Well, that wasn't what I was expecting, but okay. Uh, combat then. Let's do this quickly. Well, at least I had a net light side shift, and I gained a lot of influence with the handmaiden. Can't complain. All right. So far, so good. You fought well indeed. You have caught the principles of the style by watching and anticipating my movements. Before you go, there is something I must know. Why did you go back? Face trial. Why I went back? Hmm. Okay. These are very dark sidey. That's middle of the road. These are kind of light side. I like the first answer for sure. Because I felt they deserved an explanation. Maybe I had to hear me defend myself, just to be certain. I see. It was always something I was curious about, to walk to one's own sentence willingly. It's a brave thing. Never mind. And more influence gained and light side points. Also, I'm going to make sure she gets close on, because not having her run around this place with nothing. Uh, where was her stuff? Where, what, where'd her armor go? That's weird. I don't know where her clothing went. Uh oh. <laughs> Is that a bug? Is that a bug? Okay. Well, way. <laughs> I'm not going to let her just sit on the ship naked also i need to end the episode because well um after tacking on the other thing with uh atris i need to uh factor that into the episode time so thank you all so much for watching click the subscribe button if you like these mm, throat decided to give out let me try that again Thank you all so much for watching. Click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more. And click the like button if you like this particular video. And share and comment so we can bring more people into this community. We can talk about the games we're playing together. And I will see you all in the next episode. This has been the one the only Stray Cat. Playing games and... Whoa, I didn't know she had to stop. Playing games and trying to really learn a little bit more about my companions. And how they operate. And whatnot. Because, well, why not really? There's no other reason not to, other than just because it's a good idea, I think. And I'm going to put that there, just in case. And so far, I've learned a lot. I lost influence that I gained with Atten, I think. That was how that worked. I'm not entirely sure how the math on that equated. But I gained a lot of influence with Bowador, Handmaiden, currently. Uh, T3 and Kreia. Kreia's netted me more dark side points than I wanted, but I live. I have plenty of chances to up my light side points pretty much throughout the game. So, I think we're good. For you.